Harley Davidson is one of the most admired and recognized companies in the world. They are leaders in the industry. They are leaders in relationship marketing. And they are leaders in creating consistent growth. That leadership position is reinforced with a unique organizational design that encourages high levels of collaboration between their interrelated businesses. By capitalizing on those synergies and effectively managing their other competitive advantages, Harley-Davidson's leadership position will be ensured for years to come. And Clyde Fessler, Vice President of Harley-Davidson's business development, was and is an integral part of creating and continuing that leadership position. Clyde Fessler's presentation addresses reinventing the business with specifics on building a brand, Thank you for this opportunity to bring you the Harley-Davidson turnaround story. It's a turnaround story of a, of a small company from the uh, Rust Belt of Mid-America on the verge of bankruptcy. In fact, we even had the press releases uh, written. And how we competed against internationally known companies like Honda, Kawasaki, and Suzuki. And... Well, first of all, we had established a brand identity. And we did that through literally looking at the strengths and weaknesses of the other brands. And when you look at Harley-Davidson, you ask, what is the Harley-Davidson motorcycle? What is your brand? And why do you really want to have a brand? A product can be imitated, but a brand cannot. And simply, what is a brand? Well, it's what you are and who you are and who you sell your products to and what they expect out of your product. Harley-Davidson builds big, beautiful American motorcycles for motor enthusiasts who want their motorcycles and their products to be symbols of strength, freedom, individuality, and Americana, and also want to participate and share in the Harley-Davidson heritage, tradition, and mystique. Developing a strategy. How are you going to compete against these giants with the mega dollars, with global vistas of how they really want to distribute product? And they're not only multinational, they're global. And they could take a concept from you know, a mind, a thought in their mind of a new product, and bring it to reality as far as being a new, mo new motorcycle 18 months later. So what we decided to do is really is be the alternative of those people. Let's not compete head on with these Japanese giants. Let's go left when they turn right. And let's apply that strategy of turning left when they turn right to the four basic P's of marketing. And everybody knows what those P's are. It's product, it's price, it's promotion, it's place. Marketing 101. Now, how can you apply that strategy I just talked about to each of those places in a clever way where it's going to have some impressions on potential customers out there? Impressions is an advertising uh, term that uh, they use to register how many people know your company's name when you run an ad. Well, the formula is impressions equals frequency times impact. Analyzing the competition quality, quality, quality. And what we did in order to get that is we sent a group of 16 people to Japan in the early 1980s to study how they manufactured motorcycles. Today they call it benchmarking. Back then it was industrial spying. <laughs> but back in the early 1980s we took a small group of advertising people and marketing people we headed up to Minneapolis and we went to a small conference room for about five days of really in-depth knowledge and we anal analyzed the strengths and weaknesses not only of Harley but of Honda and Kawasaki and, and Suzuki and Yamaha. I mean back then it was called rolling up your sleeves and knowing your stuff. Today I think they call it SWOT analysis or something like that. Value migration. So we looked back into the old archives and we found out that we had been selling clothing and all kinds of accessories to our riders since 1914. And the thought came to us, if we're in the motorcycle business, why can't we be in the motor clothes business? 
So we manufacture a complete line of clothing that is functional and fashionable for all age groups. You look through our catalog, you'll find people in their 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s. Impactful advertising. Would you sell an unreliable motorcycle to guys like this? <laughs> hey, have you got their attention? But we were talking to our core people. Another thing they started to do at that time was to copy our styling. We've been famous for this classical styling that you find in Mercedes and BMWs versus the radical things coming out of the Orient. We wanted to tell people about that. But when we found out that they were copying our motorcycles, we ran this ad, and this is an introductory page to a following double page in that motorcycle book, and it says, okay, Japan, your next prototype is ready. And when you turn the page, it says, maybe this time nothing will get lost in the translation, and we printed it in Japanese. The sword was out. You know what the competition has when you buy a Honda, 35% depreciation, when you start it up and go out the door? So we ran this ad. If only you could stick this on your foreign bike at trade-in time. <clears throat> Driving a wedge between you and the competition. We bought ourselves back from AMF, and we have established this campaign called Motorcycles by the people and for the people because the executives at Harley-Davidson ride their motorcycles, and as far as we know, the Japanese executives don't. Again, driving that wedge between us and them. Mr. Honda cannot ride from LA to Milwaukee, Wisconsin, and raise $100,000 for muscular dystrophy and Jerry's kids, Mr. Davidson does. But several years ago, uh, we had uh, a big anniversary and I can't read the copy of this, but it says something like to the extent is, we have survived two wars of depression, 16 presidents, and one Marlon Brando movie. Sounds like a party to us. <laughs> and we invited everybody to Milwaukee, Wisconsin. But the way we did it was very unique because we started from 12 different places in the nation and all the vice presidents at Harley and the presidents made up into pairs selected you know, wherever they were going to ride from to Milwaukee, Wisconsin, converge on that city on the same day, and all the way we raised almost a million dollars for muscular dystrophy in Jerry's kids. Turning negatives into positives. Another thing we did was we wanted to turn negatives into positives, and Harleys at that time were called hogs. And I don't know where that name came from, racing or something like that, but that was something that the press was always using in a negative way to identify our motorcycles. And what we wanted to do was take that and put it in a positive way. So we ran this ad with this piggy bank. And we talked about the durability and the rebuildability of the motorcycle and the facts that they didn't depreciate. And we ran this ad, and the telephones just ran off the hook for the next three months, and we sold 35,000 of these piggy banks at 35 bucks a piece over the next year. <laughs> Cha-ching, ching, ching.